Hello everybody, welcome back to another video for the day. Now we're going back into r slash nice guy stories and if you would like to be absolutely amazing in helping the channel reach 30,000 subscribers, you know what to do. Hit that big red button and like the video. Alrighty, let's go. Our first story comes for us from username reformed underscore nice guy. I am a reformed nice guy. Here are my stories. Hello everyone, my girlfriend wanted me to share my stories on here so I made this throwaway account to tell you about my younger years. I am currently 32 red pilled as heck and have a girlfriend who ideologically matches up with me as far as not wanting marriage or kids. We're both pretty happy. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 21. In my younger days, I you could say that I believed that inserted nice guy tokens would dispense socks out of the vending machine. Naturally, that didn't happen. My first nice guy story happened when I was 19. A friend from high school invited me to come camping with him over the course of a week. This is a campground within reasonable driving distance from where we both live. Over the last couple of years, he had befriended two sisters who lived a few hours away who would come camping at the same campground around the same same time every year. Prior to our camping trip, my friend told me about these girls. One was 18 and one was 19. My friend didn't have their numbers or anything, but mentioned that they might be present at the campground the same week we were camping. Lo and behold, my friend and I set up camp and these two girls stumble upon us. We ended up hanging out for the first three days of our camping trip, telling each other campfire stories, swimming, playing cornhole, etc. Good times. Somewhere during the trip, she indicated that she had just broken up with a guy who was a complete butthole and wasn't looking for a relationship right now. On the fourth night, we played a game of truth or dare. My friend, who was a year younger than me at 18, and I both mutually agreed we'd try to pair up with the girls who were our respective ages, but somewhere along the line of the game, the girl I was supposed to pair up with got dared by her sister to make out with my friend. They made out right in front of me to my horror, though I tried everything I could not to display my horror. By the end of the camping trip, I actually exchanged numbers with the 19 year old and we both agreed to remain friends. I went to a private college four hours away from home and she went to a state school approximately two hours from where I lived. We ended up being more or less texting friends for the next two months until she came one weekend to visit me in town I went to school at. We spent most of the weekend with me showing her around the city and taking her to a small concert to an indie artist who was performing at a bar near the campus. She stayed in my dorm with me, but she slept on an airbed on the floor. I made no moves to try and kiss her or anything that weekend. About a week later, I admitted to her in a text that I had feelings for her. She was absolutely repulsed. She indicated to me that she only thought of me as a friend. I reacted to her in anger and wondered how she could not be attracted to me given by how nice and sweet I had been to her. I told her that I no longer wanted to be friends. The next day, I received a message on MySpace. Yes, it was this long ago that this happened, from a guy with the same name as this girl's ex-boyfriend. He told me to leave her alone. Going back and forth, it turned out she had been hooking up with this supposed butthole ex-boyfriend the whole time. I called her one last time and said, hi, so-and-so, I promise I won't bother you anymore, but just answer me one question. Have you been hooking up with butthole boyfriend the whole time? time we've been hanging out? She paused for three seconds and then she said, that's none of your gosh darn business. I ended up just laughing and hanging up the phone on her. I never talked to her again. The next story is much shorter. The following semester after the last story, I had turned 20 and decided to take a semester off of college due to financial aid issues. I went to Northern California to help a relative on his farm. This place was in the middle of nowhere. The closest town was more than a thousand people. It was a two hour drive away. I made an account on on Plenty of Fish, probably the best free dating app at the time, to talk to women. I ended up talking to a girl who went to a community college in the nearby town several hours away. My relative needed supplies from the town and asked if I could take his truck to go pick them up. I thought this would be a good opportunity to meet this girl. I messaged this girl and we agreed to meet the same day I had to go to town to get supplies. We met at a brewery, restaurant, talked, had drinks, etc. I was 20, but they didn't cart us either of us, probably because this was a college town. I paid the bill for both of us. When I was dropping her off, I went in to kiss her and she gave me the cheek. I asked her why she'd agreed to date and she said she was just bored and wanted something to do. 
I let her go and just headed home. Didn't date any other girls for the remaining several months I was there. I went back to the East Coast by the beginning of summer. Both of these experiences essentially red-pilled me. I now understand that women will decide very quickly whether or not you'll be able to sleep with them. There's really no point in dragging things out for a long time or even spending money on them at first. After that, I decided to only do free, cheap, or Dutch first dates, and I've been much more straightforward about my intentions with women. I'm just looking to have mess arounds, nothing serious, etc., and that strategy has served me well ever since. I'm sure this post will get some flack, but I hope you enjoyed these stories and got some entertainment from them. Our next story comes from us from username Bopapa1973. Nice guys, a father's perspective. I see a lot of embittered stories on this subreddit, but I am both deeply concerned and deeply compassionate towards your troubles. I want to address two groups of people, both together and individually. One, girls or boys, I suppose, who have been badly mistreated by a nice guy. And two is the nice guy who have provoked all of this outrage. Urgent, I'm offering a lot of people the benefit of the doubt in this post, but there are real, friendly, charming, dangerous people of all genders around any fear, uncertainty, certainty or doubt about a person down to no thank you and you will do okay. Use your judgment, it might save your life. Note, this post is at risk of coming across as arrogant or preachy. I do not mean it that way. I really mean it for the young in this sub who have hurt someone, been hurt, or are suffering angst and insecurity over girls or boys. If you are 30 plus, you have probably figured out most of this and can move on. Also, by way of disclaimer, I am not trained in any way to deal with the sad, sad Sad stories in this sub. I am just a decent, genuine, nice guy who wants to offer some practical advice for those of you who have been hurt by a nice guy or have been the nice guy who hurt someone. I am 41 years old, male, and a father of two, three children. They are 5, 7, and 9 years old. One of them is a cancer survivor, which I mention only because it has made me so much more attentive to life and all its nuances. My two eldest are boys, my youngest is a girl. This post, I suppose, is for them in a way. To both groups, I am not so old as to have completely forgotten my teenage love troubles. I remember very clearly, like, worrying myself sick over whether a girl would say yes to a date, handling rejection poorly, being insanely happy when someone said yes for the first time, and maybe not taking the hint a few times before I realized that a clear no is not always forthcoming for not-so-obvious reasons. Some of the things I have seen described here are mean, arrogant, illegal, and dangerous. I think it is important to understand why disingenuous nice guys feel entitled to do what he does. The logic behind these manipulative and aggressive behaviors can be very sinister. I think it goes something like this. Nice guys are consciously or subconsciously doesn't matter, trying to form a covert contract with the object of their affection. They invest in you and they feel, without explicitly stating so, that something is owed in return. Because we want what we want. This often means they feel that their target should give them socks. When the other party is this unspoken understanding fails to reciprocate, there is a feeling of betrayal. Never mind that there never a traced understanding to begin with. Never mind that the other party was unaware of any such contract. Feelings are feelings. I met your needs without being asked. Now you should meet mine by becoming my girlfriend, sleeping with me, or offering some other compensation. The fallacy of this logic cannot be overstated. It is absolutely incorrect. This is not how healthy relationships work, nor should anybody feel any obligation they have not agreed to. I thought that was how it worked is simply not good enough. It has never been. It is also important to understand that the men, often still boys, in involved in these stories don't understand their own powerful emotions or drives. I'm not making excuses, just drawing this to your attention so you might understand how best to deal with it. The best way, overwhelmingly, it to make it clear that you are not interested and that any friendship is an explicit, nothing promised, nothing owed understanding. I have a few things to say to both parties regarding this implied contract. Please do not lose heart. Genuine nice guys really do exist. Not everyone who is kind to you wants something in return. If you are romantically or interested in someone who does not return the feeling, there is only one acceptable way to behave. Respect them and leave them alone. This has always been true and is true now and always will be true. If you make this to heart, you will be a much, much happier person in the long run. Men especially need to understand that you cannot make the other person like you. It doesn't work that 
that way, and any efforts to do so are generally pitiful transparent. Your attempts to woo that person will almost certainly have the opposite effect. You are responsible for clearly communicating what you want. I would prefer you do it respectfully and with a real effort not to cause harm, but clarity is the overriding requirement here. If you are anything less than perfectly clear, you are partially to blame for any misunderstanding. You do not owe anything, but you have participated in making the situation unnecessarily complex. If you have to break their heart or have your heart broken, it will be tremendously better for you in the long run than waiting for the other party to figure it out. Nobody under any circumstances owes socks or any form of physical affection to anybody else. Period. End of story. Not on the first date, not to your best friend, not to your prom date, not to that bartender who hooked you up, not in the context of a marriage or other committed relationship, and certainly not because they were nice to you. If you have any sense of entitlement to another person, you must dismiss these feelings entirely and forever. This is your critical responsibility, and if you put your hands on my child without their consent, no reason in the world will save you from my judgment. There are a lot of general Realizations as to why one person is attracted to another, many backed up by scientific study, but there is still quite a bit of mystery involved. I have known dozens of attractive men and women who showed no interest at all in one another, and dozens who are inexplicably attracted. No matter how wealthy, good-looking, kind, generous, exciting, tough, well-hung men, preferably shaped ladies, clever, funny, nice, etc., you are, there are going to be plenty of people who don't want to sleep with you. The inverse is true too. Even murder convicts manage to find love interested. This is fine. Let it be fine. If a given person is not interested in you, it doesn't necessarily mean there is something wrong with you, or you are unworthy, or anything else. If there is an endless trend of non-interest, then you need to take some adjustments somewhere, but genuinely becoming more attractive in general is outside the scope of this topic. Some people are going to be attracted to others, and some not. It is best to learn to accept reality, live your life, life fully and passionately, and develop the maturity to deal graciously with rejection. To the ladies, I want to make sure you know a few things. Boys and young men are notoriously bad at communicating. In the modern world, this problem has been dramatically exaggerated by the ubiquity of smartphones. We stare at screens a lot, sometimes more than faces, and these awkward young men now have fewer social skills than they did in my generation. Nobody wants to hear this, particularly the young, but it is true. This means that you must be more clear than ever in indicating your intentions. If you are not interested in somebody who has affections for your, you must be clear. To do anything less does not respect the other party. Being clear in your intentions is a very specific skill, especially with a teenage boy or young adult male whose hormones are raging so hard he can't put together a coherent thought. The following are all perfectly acceptable things to say to a male who is showing you unwanted attention, and you should absolutely say them. There are almost better than making excuses or saying nothing at all. You will hurt his sensitive feelings, sure, but you are going to do that anyway if he doesn't take the hint. It will only be much more painful and drawn out unless you speak up and say something like this. I'm sorry, I don't like you that way. I'm not attracted to you. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. No, I don't want to go out with you. Even something horribly rude like freak off is much better in the long run than leaving things ambiguous. To the men, we should, all of us, be ashamed that the subreddit exists. Men, get a grip on your behaviors. Fathers, teach your sons to respect women. Sons, stop using your shoddy father as an excuse. I want to make sure you understand a few things about reality. If you are one of these so-called nice guys and have difficulty with women, do not lose heart. Become more attractive, more interesting, more sincere, more confident. Deal with your issues. The road to personal change is long and hard, but it is there for anybody who wants it badly enough. Hit the gym, hit the books, become a happy person person without a woman. Pursue a fulfilling career and slash or hobby. Learn to accept that rejection. While it feels personal, is not personal. Clean up your look a little. Learn to start a conversation with no expectations. Then try again. You might be surprised at how ladies react differently to you. I have heard all kinds of nonsense about women. I had a friend in my 20s who would call every girl who didn't walk to him in a bar a barch. What a stupid thing to think. He needed to take a step back and look at things from her perspective. Here is an 
example, imagine, if you will, that you are a stunningly beautiful, intelligent, dr well-dressed, funny, sweet, kind-hearted woman. Imagine that you are a generous lover and that you enjoy socks more than most. Because of the hormonal pressure men experience and the forward way to deal with that pressure, you now have some pretty limiting options. Spend the entirety of your time in bed with men, and if this is you, power to you. Spend a truly burdensome amount of time fending of the approaches of men, being careful to be very polite and continuing to deal with the ones that don't take the hint. Put up some walls for strictly practical reasons. You are not a barge. You just have something to do aside from being hit on and asked out all the time. This, by the way, is a very real problem for many women. If you are out with your friends, not every approach will be a welcome one. Making it clear that she is not interested does not make her a barge. It simply makes her pragmatic. If you have treated women badly, you absolutely must correct your behavior. Treating any person as an object is unacceptable, and the developed world is rushing towards a time when there is no room for you. Everyone understands no. Learn to understand when something other than no means no. A considerate woman who understands the nature of these things will do you the kindness of saying no clearly and politely, but many women, for whatever reason, will not. You will both be happier if you take the hint. Getting your hair done means no. Saying she has a boyfriend, especially if she doesn't, means no. If you just take any lack of obvious encouragement and round it down to no, you'll be okay. If you instead pursue interests where there is none, you deserve the misery that is coming to you. Regardless of how a woman treats you, how poorly she communicates her feelings or intent, how you feel about her, or how you feel about yourself, the following statement always applies. She is not obligated to express what she wants, but you are obligated to obtain her clear consent. This is true for every phase of the relationship, from just spending time with her at the school cafeteria to make that sweet, sweet love we all live for, if she is not showing interest, respect her and leave her alone. The further back I think, the more rejection hurt at the time. Being told no by Lisa Capps in the third grade was just incredibly painful. She was the first girl I ever had a crush on, and it felt like the whole school stopped to watch and laugh. Being told no by Stacy Betts in seventh grade was still terribly painful, but at least I could function afterwards. Being told no by Amy Whaley my freshman year in college sucked, and my friends gave me some shot about it, but the sting wore off in 20 minutes. In my 20s as a bartender who dates many, many women, I was often still told no, but by then I had come to understand that not everybody is going to like you. It still wasn't fun, but all the sting was gone from it. Final thoughts. Being told yes by a woman, or a man I suppose, is the most wonderful thing in the history of the world, but that statement is conditional. Unless the feeling and excitement are mutual, it will do no end of harm to your pride, dignity, and self-respect. Do you really want to be disappointed in the long run by aggressively pursuing a woman that is not really into you? If she is, believe me, you will know it. There is only one kind of involvement with a woman worth having, and that is the kind where she genuinely likes and wants to be with you. Anything less is forced and artificial, and that will come across in conversation, social circles, and in the bedroom. It doesn't matter why she likes you or doesn't like you, what matters is that she wants to be there, wherever there is. If she doesn't, any romantic or other progress will ultimately be empty of joy. It might feel good at the time, but it won't last, and it will never develop into mutual affection and respect, nor will it ever grow into that wonderful, indescribable thing we call love. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. If we can get this video to 1,000 likes, I would be absolutely blown away by all of your support and everything. And if you haven't already, be sure to slam the subscribe button. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.